Welcome to Bombay Toastmasters Club. Now, let me share the mission of the Toastmasters Club. We provide a supportive and positive learning in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills, resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. This was the mission. Now, let me request you all to please keep your cell phones off or on a silent mode so that you do not disturb the speaker or other members. I request you that during the meeting, please do not move out. If you have to, then please wait for the speaker to finish and applause to start. Another request, please, please do not indulge in cross talk during the meeting as it disturbs the protocol. A few instructions, the restroom is on the second floor, drinking water goes on the second floor. Uh, thank you very much for listening to the mission, instruction and request. Now let me welcome our district secretary and presiding officer, President Harvey. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Sachin. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests. <laughs> Once upon a time, there were two monks at the back of a river. The river had swelled because of the monsoon and so they found a young lady at the bank, very disturbed. And so the elder monk asked her, what, why, what has happened to you? She said, I need to go across the bank and I don't know how to swim. And so the younger monk said, it's okay, I will help you. And so he took her, carried her on his back, and they crossed the river. He went on to the other side, she thanked him, and the two monks did things, and she parted the ways. As the two monks kept walking, the younger monk suddenly found that the elder monk was very subdued disturbed. And so he, he just kept quiet. Suddenly, after a while, it was getting to be too much. So he asked, is something ailing you? He asked. So the senior monk said, you are a monk and you touched a woman. He said, the younger person said, but I was only doing my job. She needed to get across and I helped her. So have I not done something right? He said, no, but she's a woman. So he said, so what? It was her need and I, I helped her with it. But why, he said, why? When I have already put down my baggage and she's gone away, why is it that you are still carrying it? Fellow Toastmasters and guests, many a times we carry unwanted baggage. Unwanted baggage will only hurt you, not the other person. So let go of all your baggage, get into life, get on with your work, and stay motivated. We have quite a few guests today. Can I have a couple of them come out here, introduce yourself and just tell us how you came to know about Toastmasters and what you expect of this program. We give you about 45 seconds.
control is always taken in the past. So however nervous you are, let's contact the other before we leave the stage. Can we have another guest who wants to come up? Pursuit of happiness itself is a broad statement. 
So what I am going to talk about? Let me tell you what I am going to not talk about. I am not going to talk about any intellectual discussions over here because we are going to talk about something very action oriented, bite size actions you will take out from here when you leave this session. So let's go, bit, go to the basics of happiness. What is happiness? You might have different answers for that. But let me just give away that secret. Happiness, basically, is just three chemicals. Dopamine, serotonin, and endorphin. Dopamine is something when you win an award. That feeling, when you win that award. That is where dopamine is running through your blood. Serotonin is when you are meditating and you feel one with the nature. That is serotonin. And endorphin is when you see a child smiling. What you feel at that point is the presence of endorphin in your flesh. That's pretty much it. That is happiness. So pursuit of happiness is an oxymoron. Now for some, this might come as a surprise, shock, whatever, or an anti-climax. <coughs> Something which people have been trying to answer for ages. This is it. So fundamentally, happiness can be manufactured in a chemical laboratory. Just these three chemicals, that's it. So that's an anti-climax for some. At the same time, if you see, that gives us an access, an opening to bring more happiness in your life. Because now that we know what happiness comprises of, you can actually have it, recreate it when you want it in your life. So this core fundamentals which we talked about happiness, right? So before going further, I would like to invite some core role players today. One is the timer. <laughs> Which is played by Postmaster Dil. May I invite Postmaster Dil? Postmaster, fellow Postmaster, and guests. As a timer, my role is to time prepared speeches and uh, speech evaluation during the meeting. When the speaker reaches the midpoint of the speech, I will display a green card. When the speaker, uh, speaker reaches the uh, midpoint of the speech, I will show the display yellow card and when the speaker reaches the, at the end of the meeting at the, at the, at the end of his uh, speech I will show the green, uh, red card and then the speaker has the grace period of uh, 30 seconds before the green card or after the red card is being displayed to end the speech and as well as to qualify for the vote and I will report the qualifying times when called for The next close master to the role player, what does pursuit of happiness mean to He said pursuit of happiness is actually making progress in each area of the life. That role player today is timer of the day. May I invite close master on that?
can create those chemicals in your body through different ways. There are three different schools of thoughts. One is an intrinsic ways of, of producing these chemicals. Second is extrinsic and third is the next one. So we will go cover them one by one. Intrinsic people or people who think that it can be achieved intrinsically. There are different authors. I'll specifically talk about two, three and then pick one and then talk his own big idea in his book. Three authors I'm going to talk about is Sri Kumar Rao, who wrote a book called Happiness at Work. Second one is Dalai Lama, who needs no introduction. And third one is Eckhart Tolle. Now how is Eckhart Tolle related to happiness? He wrote a phenomenal book called Power of Now. And he wrote many follow-up books on that, on one simple idea. Life is now. Whenever you are dwelling on something in past or in future, you are either in anxiety or in remorse. When you are now, you have no problems and no nightmares. That's it. That is it. And that, if you dwell on that, you actually would get it that it's a very simple idea, but very profound. And when you are just being in now, that is where you can be happy. But does that mean at the end of this session, we are all going to go and live happy ever after? I don't know. Yes. But I would definitely leave with a feeling that the answer to that question is completely up to you. Next, I am going to call the first speaker of the day. Her speech, she is attending the first project. I would like to call, uh, request the evaluator to read out the speech of the day. Sienna. She is attending P1.
well for a girl studying in vernacular gujarati medium reading her first english novel was nothing less than Amita Dixit, a second generation Mumbaiite. My father uh, came to Mumbai and settled down in Delhi, fifty-two years ago. Then he married my mother, who was from Ahmedabad, who was a professor of Gujarati and Sanskrit. She came to Delhi. She played to perfect her role as a wife. and mother of three daughters and the eldest i fell in love at an age of 7 with books and i'm still in love with books i read during my school days anything and everything that i came across whether that was fiction mythology psychology science anything but in gujarati medium so you would understand that for a girl why reading a first novel in english was so much of jubilance i think uh, falling in love with books was because of my mother uh, she belongs to a family of uh, prominent writers in gujarati a lineage of writers and authors and i think so the literature is in my dna i am a conference one meeta is sensitive imaginative idealist
I studied, I learned the DNA of conflict in human relationships. Now I help companies, owners, where two generations are there, I help them.